Are you ready for the heavyweight championship of the world? Are you ready? Hey, welcome to Anna in this corner, bringing you another episode of Unanimous Decision. And today, who are we talking to, Bill? We told y'all before, stop playing with us. And today, we got a good one. You heard what he said, unanimous decision. That's our exclusive interview series. And today we got a good one. We have a banger. We have one for the ages. This married couple have graced the big screen. You've heard their voices and Kurt Franklin and the family. You know one as Miss Cora. You know one as Mr. Brown. Today, yes, we do have David and Tamala Mann. Here we go. We got the mans here today. Um, you guys ready to step into this ring? We, we're, we're ready. ready. Let's All right. go. All right, let's do it, Bill. Hey, we got some a, legends a, in the building today. It's a tag team match. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, elated to have you guys on our show. You guys are phenomenal singers, actors, entertainers, and just great overall people. Thank you so much for gracing us on our channel. We truly appreciate it. We wanna give you your flowers now. I know you get them a lot, but please just let, just know that it is coming from um, a humble yet appreciative place right now. Um, again, please excuse me, I'm a little nervous because you guys- Don't be nervous, just I, we can take, <laughs> take a deep I mean, breath and just speak into your uncle and I. Man, this this is unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. We're, we're just we're just we we old enough to probably be your parents, right. but right. just figure you're talking to your auntie, your uncle, at the same <laughs> time, y'all just chilling, and you just had a couple questions you wanted to ask, and that's fine. And rock and roll. So just like yes, that, sir. everyday life. Yes, sir. Everyday life. So let's let's get it. Um, you guys started out, Kurt Franklin. Mm -hmm. uh, my first memory, I, hope, let's see if you guys know this. My first memory of Kirk was him directing Every Day with Jesus. <clears throat> wow. That's how old I am. By the DFW, DFW Mass DFW Choir. Mass. Yeah. <laughs> DFW Mass Choir. My pops had the DVD. I mean, excuse me. He had the VHS. We used to watch it all the time. Wow. Um, Yes, <laughs> my favorite you went, song. You went, you went way back. Yeah, way I went back. way back. I, I went way back, and I remember when he was directing the song and moving his head, and I remember it all. No. Um, <laughs> uh, Mr. Man, I remember you on "He's Able." That's how. That's my. That's how far back my memory goes with all. With both and I see a lot of people don't know that before that, Kurt, Tamla, myself, and another gentleman, Daryl Blair. We all started as a as a little small group. We look like Gladys Knight in the in the pips. We look 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 more like Gladys Knight in the pimps. But uh, oh, wow, okay. we were way back there. We started locally doing stuff like that right before Kirk went to do DFW Mass. We were all a group called the Humble Hearts, right? And so we started that way, and we would go around. And then we really didn't have a band or now think about it. We didn't have a band or anything. Well, Kirk played in it. We had one. Well, we had a, just yeah, we had a, a piano and a, and a, a drummer. Right. That was it. Yeah. And we traveled around locally just doing what we love to do. Some some days we would three and four churches at a time. Oh, mm. yeah. yeah. That, that, look, that, that was actually our way out because a lot of us, we didn't have a lot of money. So back then, you know, church events was church events was free. So mm -hmm. that was like incredible. Excuse me. I thought I cut this off and it's no, still ringing. And it's a spam call. <laughs> <laughs> but so that was really kind of our way out, uh, a way to have different events going on for us is actually just singing in church. So that's how we all got started. That's what's up. Did, um, did you guys notice Kirk's gift back, back then? <laughs> Excuse me. Bless yes. You. I mean, he, he he was very talented even then, and he had charisma yeah. with the people. Uh, him and me and David, you know, we sang, but they were more, him and Daryl were more like the leaders because it's like, I, I like to sing, but I didn't like to talk. So both mm. of them being out in the forefront and David, 
I was just in the back shoe wop to shoe wop. I was, <laughs> I, they were just introducing me to gospel music and yeah. gospel as you know, like we know it now. Because I was doing, I was doing that. I was playing in a band like a rock band, a rock band oh. called Profanity. My God, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. That's funny. And so you know, early on we did see his, his charisma. Uh, yeah. I remember my first memory of of seeing Kirk Franklin was at. A church, I think he had to be at like 12 or 13 years old going to Mount Rose. He came to our church and this little boy at the time, 12, was, was directing the choir. The senior. Like the senior, the like all of the grown people. Mm -hmm. And he was directing and moving the choir. Like, who is this little dude? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I've seen, so that's my first memory of, of dealing with him. So early on, he did have that charisma. He did. You know, that, that shine him. through, yeah. And um, you guys both have uh, <laughs> fingerprints on the origin stories of uh, Kirk as well as Tyler Perry. So their content is more popular now. But um, back then, you know, to quote Kirk, you know, some people thought that gospel music went too far. So, you know, um, so right. before social media, did you ever have to deal with like hate mail or any type of derogatory crowds like folks that were kind of after you um, saying, hey, well, we saw we saw we saw a little bit of that, especially mm -hmm. like the ladies with Kirk. I saw yeah. that. And mm -hmm. so it was we did. It wasn't like so much hate mail, but people, you know, like like even to this day, how people can do too much. Yeah. Yes, we had some doing too much. <laughs> And but it wasn't too far out of line. Of course, wh whenever you're laying the foundation for something and you're setting a tone for something, and he was doing something new. Mm -hmm. And so so when you're doing something like that and you're gonna be out front, you're gonna take the hits first. Because yeah. of course, you know, yeah. when a lot of the contemporary stuff came out, it was like, boy, you done lost your mind. <laughs> I what remember. are you doing? Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times in, in our concerts, he would, even though he would dance, he would still take them back, like give them a hymn or, you know, yeah. incorporate a hymn there to just get their attention that, like the scripture says, for the young and old to go forth together. And mm -hmm. there has to be a change. You know, Amazing mm -hmm. Grace is still a wonderful and powerful song. Yes, it is. Yes, Sometimes it is. you have to change it up a little bit to catch the ear of, of our younger crowd. Yeah. Let them know that this was the foundation and this is a song with a great meaning that, you know, if it wasn't for his amazing grace, where would we be? So it's mm -hmm. just something we have to just rephrase mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that. And I remember, well, for me, my standout um, perform singing performances from the both of you uh, Miss Man, it was for from for me. You did I I'll fly away. Um, play. I can't, I can't right now. I can't really remember which uh, it was, play it was on. Uh, 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 I fly away was in me and Keisha did it, and I can do bad all by myself. Okay, that was like the very yes. first one. That okay. was like the very first play we did with Tyler. Was it you and Keisha? Yeah, it was me. It was, was me. No, you, I think you started. Day. Joyce. It, Joyce. Was, it was Joyce. I take it back. Her name was Joyce. I can't think of her last name. Uh, which one was that? I can't remember which one. Now, now you got me. <laughs> but was, it was, wasn't wasn't it the one when somebody passed away? Somebody. Was somebody like, in the somebody oh, passed, passed away. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh wait! I gave you the synopsis no. for every play. Yeah, I'm gonna oh get it. God. I'm gonna get it. I'm and gonna I'm, gonna think, I'm gonna think while we're talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think of it. <laughs> but, but I'll fly away. I'll fly you away. Know. Let's meet the Browns. Was it was me? Yes, it was. <laughs> it was after the funeral, I think. Was it? Okay. Meet the Browns. Okay, meet the Browns. So that that vocal performance, also "Now Behold the Lamb," that's probably my favorite Kirk song. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, yours was He's Able. Those are the two standout singing performances that just stood out to me. You know what? When great. did. Okay. Go, no, sorry. no, no. I was gonna, when, when, did, when did you know you could sing? That yeah. you had this God given like gift? Yeah. Both of y'all. When did you know? I didn't know I, I could yeah. sing. I just knew that the ladies liked it when I would sing to them on the phone. <laughs> like, Girl, I'm coming over there. Ooh, yeah. No, but, but when it really, it was like on the phone for real. Like I, I, 
I never knew. Oh, that like, always that, for your song. Yeah, I never knew like a moment, but I just knew when I sung that. It's like see one more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine was kind of early on for me uh, as a kid. Um, I don't feel no way tired was by James James Cleveland. Cleveland was my first song, and mm -hmm. I sung. I sung it, and people. My uncle started, and I was singing with the little bitty kids, but they started requesting it uh, more and more. As you know, when I first sang it, and it, and it, I started singing it on the radio with him like mm -hmm. early morning Sunday services that they used to record back in the day. And it just kept going. So at 12, I really realized, okay, I have a voice. Mm -hmm. And it just kept growing and how I just fell be, in love with it. How you gonna be 12 singing with the adults? Like I was 12 <laughs> singing with the senior choir because I think because I really acted grown up and, and my mom, you know, it's like I was around a lot of older people. So I had mm -hmm. like an old spirit as they would say. So. Mm -hmm. I just, I came, I, you know, I was really obedient and following, following, I guess, following the order. You was just churchy early. I was very churchy. Mm, he got about shot. Very churchy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Man, I, um, so what, con congratulations to the both of you. I know you guys are entering the fourth season. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So wait, um, question. Assistant, li I'm, assistant living. Assistant living. Yeah. So um, I know um, with the, with the up, recently uh the writer strike so here's here's the the cool thing about you guys like um under Tyler Perry's camp I know um he writes a lot of his own material but so when uh, something like a writer strike happened um are you guys seeing delays that could possibly interrupt the uh, upcoming season go ahead because we are union we try to honor that and not yeah. cross mm -hmm. you know um we do have a contractual obligation so mm -hmm. Just got to kind of juggle it out. Hopefully, by the time we're ready to shoot again, yes, I pray that all this will be over. <clears throat> right in yeah. Jesus' name. Because, Amen. Because, Amen. Because I mean, I don't. You know, we don't know, and it's hard. You know, but people, all everybody, I just like this. Everyone has to be treated fairly, whatever yeah. that is, and yeah. that's the way. You know, I want to be treated fairly, and what, what I'm, my obligations are, and to be mm -hmm. met. So I, I can't take that away from somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so, absolutely. Because I, because be our union protects us, so yeah, you know, and it's cool. It's cool you guys aren't crossing yeah. the uh, picket line. Yeah. And congrats to you, because I think you're um re you're about to join the directors guild as well, right? I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> congrats. <laughs> congrats. It, Director yeah. David Me. Yeah. Man, more more titles, but I do understand the the crossing of the union and uh, crossing of the line and the unions. I'm an educator, and we have a union, so mm -hmm. they're certain things that, you know, we can and can't do. So yeah, you try to honor, you know, honor, that you mm -hmm. to honor your contract with this. And so it's a fine line between Amen. doing what's right and doing what you have to do. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we got um, Mr. Brown and Ms. Cora. Right. Um, My dear. <laughs> I just, again, remember the character, you, your characters took the world by storm and to find out that Cora was Mr. Brown's and Medea's daughter. Right. And I remember when she said it and she walked. <laughs> you know, that, that, that whole thing started by accident. Like, okay, every, every night on stage, you just never really knew what you were going to get. <laughs> what okay. David and Tyler were going to do. You and know. one night it just got thrown out there and it was like, wait a minute. And so it just grew from there. And it just started growing like, okay, mm -hmm. wait a minute, Mr. Brown and my dad. Was like, I remember the night you had me in that car. car. <laughs> <We're standing. laughs> it was just a joke one night yeah. that we okay. fought. Mm -hmm. And and Cora wound up like, oh, Cora is. And he, and he just started writing it in. Okay. Yeah. I, I, how, how difficult, because we see daughter and we see father. But, you know, obviously you guys are married. Did you ever kind of look at it as, was it ever difficult at any, any point has, in time? But, it has not been difficult for me because okay. it's like once I put that wig on and I put it, the characters like Forrest Cora and him, you know, sometimes I have to tell him, I'm your daughter right now. You ain't no kiss me. <laughs> Don't come pat me on my book. Mm -hmm. Don't come hugging on me. I'm your daughter right now. So, <laughs> and, and, and I have 
you know, even to this day, thank God, I've never called him David out of character. It's like once okay. he puts on his character, he is Mr. Brown to me. And, and it's like, it's so fun. And I get in trouble because I laugh because he's so funny to me, just looking at him yes. and then yes. all the animation that he adds. So I just enjoy it once he gets going. I, and I hate not being in a scene with him. My, my brother was saying he was watching an episode the other night mm -hmm. and he said he was watching a, I think I was teaching him karate. Mm -hmm. and he said, you were just laughing in the background. I could see you in the background. I mean, because mm -hmm. I was. I was <laughs> and, and Kim Fields actually uh, uh, Direct directed episode. that episode and she was okay. like, she called me, she said, tell me, man, you're the worst. <laughs> She said, I had to cut all around you because you was laughing so hard. But it was just like, that David, was a funny episode. it was, yeah. you know, him and his improv and improv. And he keeps changing. I'm like, I'm thinking that he's going to stick to something and he changes up, y'all. It's like, I, I, I stick to changing. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he is and a consistent changer. And from a viewer's <laughs> perspective, those are the best parts of the episode where yeah. we see you guys break character and laugh. Mm -hmm. like, those are the YouTube yep. moments we love. And it's, um, speaking <clears throat> of YouTube moments, I want to bring up one of um, uh, Mr. Man, one of your most viral moments. Uh, so the 2016 Hoodie Awards. Oh I, man, I I, I, re I revisit that clip on an annual basis. I think it's the most memorable clip from the uh, Hoodie Awards. So you and Lavelle Crawford, you guys get into a roasting. A match and you get the best of them. And, um, it wasn't supposed to be that way. I think I could tell. <laughs> Literally, I was supposed to go up and we had I had three minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I to think it was Michael J. Michael J. White and uh, you were um, Tracy Ellis Ross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we were going up to present. And it was three minutes. What they didn't know is Lavelle had been messing with people. And you, the thing is, you don't mess with Lavelle. Lavelle is the ultimate. He's, roster. He's, yes. Yes, that, that, he's really good. Lavelle, mm -hmm. I love him. Awesome. I said something. I said something to him, and I knew when I said it out of my mouth, I was like, this is going to be a problem. Yeah. Because he was like, this you, is be my, you was messing with my friend, talking about Kurt, because he was messing okay. with Kurt. So okay. my deal was, I didn't want to get murdered, so I fought back. And I'm <laughs> behind stage getting ready to come out the scene after all of this. I had the scene take me to the king. Mm -hmm. After all okay. of this. I'm like, I'm backstage like, oh my God. And the people are just slayed out. People were all rolling. over the floor. People was just rolling, running around in the room. It was the craziest thing. It reminded me of high school. Yeah. Been in high school. That's we had this little hallway that mm -hmm. we would go, and that's all we would do. And, and we would, if you came through this ha hallway, you were gonna get the business. Mm -hmm. And when he came up there on stage, I was like, okay. We're going to have to do this. I'm going to have to either fight or I'm going to get whooped tonight. <laughs> I'm not taking the whooping. You ain't going to get no whooping. You know? <laughs> I'm not taking the whooping. Wow. The, cra the crazy part. The, the, the thing is, the, night, the morning after, because, mm -hmm. you know, of course, it started to go viral. So the morning after, he was on Tom Joyner. And so Tom Joyner called me like five something, something in the morning. Like, David, man, I heard that y'all, you and Lavelle yeah, have beef. beef. They have beef. And I was like, I don't have beef with nobody in the game. I just want to clear that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was on the radio with him listening. Uh, he, he lying. Yes, we do. We have beef. Yeah. Like, why would you tell this man that we got beef? Like, <laughs> people don't think me and you really got beef. It, he it, said, you know. we have beef. We went to the back. We had beef. We had chicken. We had beef. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lavelle Crawford. Just yeah. Lavelle. It, was, it was incredible. He, he's, a, he's an awesome comedian. Yeah. Awesome, it awesome, is. awesome comedian. That was a moment I think none of us ever forget. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, you, we will be here for days going over your list of accomplishments, awards, and everything that you guys have just just garnered throughout the years. <clears throat> Excuse me. And well deserved, well deserved. Do you ever step back and look? I guess maybe look. Look on the outside, looking in, saying, "I can't believe we're really here." Coming, coming from the Fort the, Worth, the, Texas, the Fort Worth, deep, deep, mm -hmm. Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, now Texas. we're here at the top, basically at the top of the game. Have you guys ever just said, "How"? We do. We still shed. Okay. We still shed tears about it. 
when we drive up to our house and and just stop at the gate, we cry, we thank God, we thank the Lord Jesus for all that he's done. We never want to take it for granted. And it, to me, it's a mushy moment because I'm so grateful. I mean, like, even like talking about it now, it really makes my eyes water up because we're, it, you know, it could have, it just could have went so many different ways. You know, our lives could have went right. so many different ways, but if there was a piece of the puzzle that was changed in any way, it could be this story would be changed. That we we were recently honored at the uh, for the icons of the culture, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> you know you just do what you do. We've been doing this for thirty years, and you do what you do, and just not think of it. We got in here. We just needed to take care of our kids, right? And so you, you do what you do, and you see all of this stuff that they're putting on the screen, like you've done this and you've done this yes. movie this and you've done this accomplishment and you stop and think like really we was boohoo we did that and we've been in this game that long we oh y'all no. <laughs> <laughs> and you just you just don't realize how much that you've done because you're in the center of it mm -hmm. driving and never mm -hmm. stop get out of the car and take a look and say wow we have accomplished a few things so we never we never could have imagined this being like this no but i'm so i'm so grateful again so thankful even for even the love and support the favor that god has given us with people yes. man it's just i mean i i never would have imagined even us being kids people have always favored us and you you're not growing up you don't know what that is you really mm -hmm. don't understand when people are helping you out you just think oh they just helping me out but when we go back and look at our lives how people favored us even as young kids mm -hmm. I, I mean it's like my church home people they helped my mama with my graduation that's how poor we were I mean it's like people oh, yeah. were always looking out for me and you know like me marrying him and he's 35 been, years the Lord looked out for you and he's been he's been <laughs> on I'm gonna give you your flowers I said he looked okay <laughs> He's been looking out for me. And I mean, I just, I mean, I love him for it and just supporting us, supporting each other and trying to push mm -hmm. each other on to our, to be great in the things that we do. And we, you know, we don't mind sharing the light. No. It's like when he's no. up, I'm like so happy and just laughing harder than the audience and louder. We move out of the way. So I'm just really mm -hmm. grateful for you guys. And it's just to even, you know, be on y'all show and to be a part of this, and y'all to even ask us the questions. We never take that for granted that somebody want to talk talk to you. Because, I mean, he say, he always tell me, he's like, hey, you want to get weary when people stop calling you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Not when everybody says, no, you, you, no matter how big or small, yeah. make sure you take time because Oprah Winfrey started somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, so yeah. now, and, yeah. And we, we are, say it. And we appreciate you guys because the story that you're telling about people giving uh, favor, that's definitely, I felt like that's how we felt when you guys agreed to do the interview um, because that's just a testament to your character. Like you said, um, not despising small beginnings. So we truly appreciate you guys for joining the show. That's big. Yeah, we, we, we were when, I, when I saw the email, I dropped the phone. He thought we, I thought because we, I yeah. thought, I literally I thought, thought you guys were hacked. I said, they, yeah, I, like, I dropped the phone. Like, no, this is, <laughs> I mean, you could throw out a hundred fishing lines, one may bite, you know, but when I saw the response, I couldn't believe it. And when you guys came on, a reality, it, a, a, a thought became reality. Yeah. And, and I know your daughter handles uh, some of your book and stuff. So I, I like... I wasn't going to believe it until I saw your faces on the other end of the interview, like their daughter <laughs> playing games. But, so, um, you no, know, shout out to her. Um, and no, we, we we're truly appreciative. So I got I got a question. Speaking of favor, um, and I, I know you guys have been blessed through your career. Sometimes crowds could like um, withhold favor. And a lot of times when you're touching classics, I think. Um, Fans could be very, very toxic. So I want to talk uh, to Tamala for a little bit. Word is you'll be touching a classic soon. Uh, a Warner Brothers film adaption of a classic, The Color Purple. Yep. Now, um, 
you're not worried about that, like touching, putting your fingerprints on a uh, classic, your feedback, well, please. I, you know, for, I'm not worried about it because the artists that they chose to be a part of this, I feel like everybody's, they came through for what the parts that they were playing, the music that they're putting together. Um, I just feel like we're all going to come through. And, I, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at it as a team player. Mm -hmm. that we're all coming through and we're going to come out with our hands up. I really, really believe in it. And even for me, I'm opening the, the movie with the first song and how I went into it is like, I got to know my stuff. I got, you know, it's like they had me dancing, y'all. That's what's the trip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm used to the singing part, but you know, I mm -hmm. dance the whole mm -hmm. day dance, my dance. <laughs> so for and me, that's a little iffy because the white girl in her. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so you know I got yeah. to see some shots into that Blitz was doing, and I'm just really, I'm just I'm I just believe in it. I believe everyone is gonna be really really touched yeah. by what's going to happen in the, in the movie. And see, I got an opportunity outside and look in. So just okay. as they're shooting, I get a chance to see some of the scenes they were shooting. And I was like, this is going to be crazy. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the music and the, the dance moves and, yeah. you know, it was just, it was, I was like this the whole time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, but they, when I tell you, our people came through. And mm -hmm. I mean, okay. the extra, the dancers, like he just said, y'all, those These young, those young people, I mean, they, look, they made the 50 year old, like, come on, girl, I'm gonna <laughs> do some steps that I didn't think I could do. So it was really, they were really encouraging. Everybody mm -hmm. was really encouraging to each other. So I'm excited to, for everybody to see it in December. I think it's going to come out like the 22nd. Uh, don't, don't hold me to it, but round right at Christmas. December, just stay tuned. Yes, yeah. but yeah. I that am. I'm excited. I mean, I haven't seen anything. I wanted them to totally finish before I seen anything, but I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. And that's that's great because The Color Purple is my favorite movie. Mm -hmm. And my birthday is December 27th. Oh, so, really? yeah. Yeah, it's so gonna be a good it's going to be a great birthday. It's it's gonna... You know, they did the stage play and the movie. So to intertwine that the musical, it's a musical. musical. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. gonna get to hear some singing, dancing, and get the acting, and all of that. Twerking so, and all. No <laughs> twerking. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and with you involved, they look like they're staying close to the roots with having uh, folks with theater experience. So that's that's awesome they, that you're part yes. of it. And um, now I know he's joking and he said they'll be twerking in it. The cool thing about you guys <laughs> is. Whenever your name is attached to the project, it brings a certain gravitas to it. So like um, when folks look at your films and TV credits, your loyalty to Christian media is evident. Um, I mean, you, you're in VeggieTales. <laughs> so um, what films, <laughs> you, see, I, you thought I didn't know that, but um, wow. what, what films, are, uh, so what films or TV shows have you guys have had to say no to because uh, the roles or uh, projects straight too far away from you know, uh, projects that we're used to seeing you guys. We won't say no the names, names. <laughs> but we have, <laughs> had have to, been some. But we have, yeah. yes, we have had to say no because it didn't line up to what, yeah. you know, and I'm not going to compromise my mm -hmm. integrity or my salvation because mm -hmm. that's what it is and my faithfulness to God because yeah, my yeah. faith is my everything and I won't. And my grandkids watch. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, grandkids are watching. so we yeah. want to be careful that we try to leave, you know, we're going to make mistakes and we have made mistakes and tell them, but we're just trying to stay as close to the, yeah, the line yeah. in the, yeah. We, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's all we can do, you know, because I feel like our world and our young people need examples. Mm -hmm. And I want them to know that there are some examples out there. Everybody is not doing the fool and, right. you know, yeah. just going all across every line that <laughs> they can do. Right, doing all kinds of crazy. So, you know, for those who do what they do, that's what they do. But for us, this is what there's a line that you know. Yeah, yeah. I walk up to it and look over, but I don't. I won't. <laughs> we ain't gonna cross it. I mean, but you you've had a stellar career, even if we, when we look at it from beginning to end, mm -hmm. by staying a certain way. So, if it's not broke, we're not fixing it. Fix it. So now I go on stage to do stand up. I, I, I'm, I've never been a cuss. I don't cuss in my daily life. So I, mm -hmm. when I get on stage, I just don't do it. I, 
a lot of guys like you can throw a couple in there and it'll be funnier, but I just try to do a certain way, you mm -hmm. know, I think yeah. that works for me. And it most, works. most people I would call their bluff, but um, I heard like, even when people try to get you out of character, you stay true to who you, you really are. Me. Like, um, um, uh, the, uh, Nephew Tommy. Nephew Tommy. Yeah, he tried to he tried to throw you off your A game. And I listened to the clip and I'm like, all right, he going to break character. Like, I think, you know, I think, but you st you stuck in there. And that's that just shows that's who you are. And that's like yeah. a genuine type feeling that we was getting from that prank call. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, look it up on YouTube. Nephew Tommy tried to prank him and he would not. <laughs> He would he not jump. I was putting on my clothes and I was about to go over there and pay him a friendly visit. Let's <laughs> <laughs> like see he, he normally you don't cuss, but he will fight now. Yeah. And, and nephew get nephew Tommy gets a lot. He gets of under people's too. skin. He, he is do. Yeah. He, I like, heard, yes, I have heard some. I've heard him get some pastors and, and stuff. I'm, yes. I'm like, whoa, but yeah. you know, but. Sometimes some people can push that a little bit. I just, I, you know. Now I get mad, but I ain't gonna cuss, but I will say the N word. We, <laughs> I will, I'll shoot you one yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, I'm the same way. I'm not gonna curse, but I'll drop a couple of N's in there. So don't Oh, yeah. yeah. God's still working. He's still working on me. God, so yeah. I just I just say that. He, he's still working on me. Oh, right yeah. <laughs> You're a work in progress. I, I'm a still. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> now, man, don't get it twisted. Now, I I don't cuss, but, but I you will you the first lick. Yeah. <laughs> I will cash you the first stone. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, May is May. The month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And uh, that David, I I know you're working on your biography, including your mental health journey, mental wellness journey. Mm -hmm. um, how important is it to maintaining your mental health in this day and age? And second part to that, what do you, what steps are you taking to just to maintain a positive mental uh, mental health or mental wellness? For me, it is very important because we have created somehow through the decades of us, we created this stigma about mental health that yes. those people that are suffering from mental health or having some issues should be locked in a back room. Mm -hmm. And we create a stigma that makes people afraid to tell their story because we're afraid that we're going to be locked up if we tell like, look, I'm having some issues. What we have to start doing is creating a space, a healthy yes. space for people to be vulnerable. Because that's the problem is people just afraid to be vulnerable because we look at, especially men, if we come clean and come vulnerable, we feel like I'm weak. Mm -hmm. I've let, yeah, yeah, yeah we're mm -hmm, told. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so we've created that, that stigma where for me personally, I was embarrassed to come out. Right. It's okay. like it was a deep embarrassing secret. Like, hey, I don't want to tell nobody because of the stigma that we've put on this in our African-American community. So mm -hmm. for me, part of the, the coming clean was sharing with my family and saying, y'all, I need to get some help. Right. Yes. I need to get some help because this doesn't feel good. It mm -hmm. doesn't feel right. And mm -hmm. so that's what I think we have to do is we have to open those doors and open those spaces where we can come become vulnerable in the situation. And, and let me tell y'all, there is nothing wrong with seeking professional help. There is nothing Absolutely. wrong with going to see a counselor. We've, we've for so long, we've said, I'm not finna go up there and sit on them white folk couch and yep. tell them is, you know, what, what happened in the house stays in the house. And we swept so much under the rug and we've all emotionally been scarred. And yes. so we take that into our adulthood. We bring that into our marriages. We take it into other relationships. Mm -hmm. And it's just time that we just create these spaces where we can come emotionally clean. And if I could jump in there for, yes. from a woman's perspective with our Black men, mm -hmm. we have to be more encouraging. And like, like he was saying, I have heard and seen with women, because I grew up with seven brothers, for, for you to see a man cry makes them weak. But to me as a woman, it makes it, them look stronger. It makes y'all look stronger. And we need to encourage y'all to sometimes shed tears because it lets me know that you are sensitive, that you can be sensitive to when I'm crying, when I have my tears, 
and that it helps actually release stress oh, yeah. from your body. I mean, to just release, you know, you got to have a release. Everybody has to have a release. For me, point. crying is my relief valve. <laughs> when I let a little bit mm. of that go, that's my pressure relief valve. Yeah. It's when I don't cry, we're going to have a problem. So. And, that's, <laughs> and that's for a lot of yes. people. And I mean, it even happened for, for you to train a baby or a little boy that early or even tell any kid what you crying for. I mean, Shut up. Jumping up. Don't you know, cry. Let's just ask maybe what the issue is. Can you tell me why you're crying? Okay, yep. let me know why you're crying and then maybe we can do something. Let's see what yeah. we can What's do. I had a cousin and he felt terrible about this. He said his son had hurt his leg and his son was laying there and he was crying. He said, get up, toughen up, get up. Yep. You, you know, your leg hurt. What you crying for? Toughen up. And he said, I thought about it. He said, the reason he's crying is because he's hurting. He's really hurting. So he said, what I what I caught myself and did was I embraced his pain. Okay, let me see how we can fix it, how we can help you relieve some of this pain, rather than just being like, you get tough. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody see you. Don't let nobody yep. see your tears. Like, no, I, mm -hmm. I want you to see me. You'll know I'm vulnerable. How can you help me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And um. <clears throat> You're absolutely correct, because I, as a black male growing up, you hear big boys don't cry. Right. Stop crying. Hush all that up. Don't be yeah. no punk. Don't yeah. be no punk. You know, so yeah. we we are often, um, I guess, led to believe that we can't be vulnerable. We can't right. express ourselves. So when we become adults and now we become husbands or boyfriends and so forth, we, suppress we don't know how to deal with adversity or certain things and then we we pass it on we pass it on yeah. to our our you what so. we what we do is we learn how to suppress our emotions yep. as boys because that's what we're told then we learn that same we keep that thing going suppress our emotions as men and so we bring a, a nice fine perfect woman into that that equation and we see her a little emotion emotional and we like what you crying for What's real problem mm -hmm. is because we've suppressed ours for so long. We don't even know how to tap into the emotion and be comforting to her. Yes. And so we, but we've, we've created that from little boys. And yes. even uh, to piggyback off of what you said about just the stigma around sitting on somebody's couch. I know my wife and I have been married 13 years. We go to therapy every two weeks. So it's like, yeah, I, I, uh, we got, the Christian aspect, yes, we're biblical, but also mm -hmm. from the practical aspect, I'm gonna need to sit on this couch. So First natural, then spirit. That's the whole. That's a whole nother conversation that we can have because right. some people will say, "Well, if you go in the castle, where is your faith?" My mm -hmm. faith is still my faith, and it's mm -hmm. but I realize that after I get up from that altar saying "Thank you, Jesus," for 500 times, I still have some of the same issues that I need to address and mm -hmm. that I need to get worked out. So it's not that I'm not, I don't have faith. You know, I, I say, if I have a problem with my heart, I go see a heart specialist, somebody who the, I hope that the Lord is blessed to guide their hands if I have a serious issue. Same as it relates to somebody who's a professional in mental, mental health. I say, listen, I hope that the Lord is guiding you to give me some guidance and show me some professional help to show me how to get through this. We all, even as older, you know, even as adults, we still need some guidance sometimes. Definitely do. That's Definitely. the thing. A lot of times we feel like, I'm grown. Ain't nobody tell me I'm a that. grown man. You know, but grown woman. I mean, people do it as women. It's like somebody still can tell you something. Mm -hmm. Yes. And sometimes it can come out of the mouths of babes, meaning your kid could yeah. probably tell you something that could help you along the way. So we just have to learn to be, you know, it's like with my grandkids. I'm like, Lord, whatever I missed, with my daughters and my son. Help me not to miss that with my grandkids. Mm -hmm. Help me, you know, to be more attentive to hear or to just to give them guidance, you know? Yes. So it's like, there's always something or that we can get better at, but that, you right. know, you can grow in some kind of way every day or learn mm -hmm. something. And, and I have to, you know, with the guys, I definitely make sure that they know it's okay that it's not okay. Right. Because we're. I, I got so busy trying to make you know, my, and I go back to my mental health challenge. Mine wasn't financial. You know, you saw, you know, some things happen is my finances. We were mm -hmm. in the best place from a marriage standpoint that we've been in a while. It's that I had taken on so much as Superman 
and as the fixer that it started to wear me, wear me down. And I'm just so busy trying to make sure everything is okay. And I had to tell myself, it's okay that it's not okay. Right. It's okay yeah. sometimes to just simply say, I don't have the answer. And I don't know. I can help you mm -hmm. figure out the answer or you can help me figure out the answer, but I don't know. Yeah. And so it's not for, I can, you know, my thing of telling them guys is, it's not for you to fix everybody's problems. Mm -hmm. You, not, I say they got to go to God just like we go to God. So mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they need they may need to go for a little, little prayer time themselves <laughs> to 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 try to figure this thing out versus somebody just giving them step by step. I have to ask God. I need ABC. I need you to tell me. Uh, it go. It can be uh, from a child's uh, place perspective. Of, yeah. perspective. Mm -hmm. I need to understand what I need to be doing next, who I need to be doing it with. Is this the right place that I need to be? I need my steps to be ordered. And I just want you to give me Oh, that. that's the best word right there. Hey. <laughs> what are my steps? <laughs> what are my steps? Um, I asked this question uh, to, to our different musicians and singers and producers and so forth. Um, Mount Rushmore. We know Mount Rushmore has four heads on it. So I'm going to ask you, who are your four gospel figures? Gospel wow. artists, figures, it can be singers, it can be producers, whoever it is, who would be on your your Mount Rushmore of gospel figures? Oh, well, I'll say for my life, my <clears throat> Mount Rushmore. For gospel music or? Can I say for my life? For me, my rap, my Mount Rushmore is David Mann, okay. Tyler, okay, Kirk Franklin, and my uncle, which is R.L. Sample. Mm -hmm. That is my Mount. Can you say the second one again? I think you um, went out a little bit. David Mann, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Okay, all right, there we go. Kirk Franklin and R.L. Sample, which is my uncle. She was ready. Okay. She was like the father for me. Yeah, she okay. had it written down already. Like that, she. Oh, okay. this is. I've yeah. been saying this for, that a while. for a while. Okay, so as far as <laughs> gospel music, of course. Franklin. I mean, who you? This yours. Who's yours? Be open at first. You know. Okay. Kirk, I put Kirk. James Moore. Mm hmm And huh? What? He said timeout. Timeout. <laughs> Every time I hear his name, I time. I have to time everybody out. Yeah. My favorite gospel artist of all time. Mm -hmm. He is one James of my Moore is my hands. Damn. And he's going to get up. I was talking about him today. Yeah. He's consistently, go on and on. On. he's consistently on our guest, uh, Mount Rushmore, by the way. So, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, James mm -hmm. is up there. Yeah. I, and I got to tell you, you know, there's you the, 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 the other ones can be changed out. They can be yeah. intertwined <laughs> from gospel music. And I mean, because there are so many. That's you got a lot. Like, Leandria, you got, you know, uh, Hasha, you got Yolanda, you got yeah. CC, yeah. you got, um, you, that's too many. Yeah, it, yeah, that's, it could be James Cleveland. Yeah. James He's, Cleveland. I mean, the, you the, can the rotate first. out the last Andre two Crouch. Yeah. Can, like, I, I have to I just. I love them because I, they all, you know, when you, I go back, they all played a part of my life. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. my, mm -hmm. my favorites. That Clarks I what I that I grew up to that I took on earlier will be the Clark sisters, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, James Moore, and between the Hawkins and Andre mm -hmm. Crouch, because Andre Crouch was like he was the biggest to me, the best writer of oh, all time. You're talking about writer of so all time. So it's like it's so <laughs> many of them. And like now, you know, a lot of the guys is like. In my playlist that I, I listen to a lot. Zacardi Cortez. Zacardi Cortez. Oh, man, that boy, uh, yeah. Both of the Todd Gabbard and Todd Delaney, or they all at the top of my list that I okay. listen to. They're like in constant rotation. Uh, uh, and I also, I even, uh, my other one is Isaac Curry too. So it's like a lot mm. of the guys. So I just flip to it. Lisa knows Smith is one. So I'm just, I listen to old and new stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, we forgot Colante. Yeah. Yeah, so that I like, boy. I, I mean, I like because I really like the even the old school, meaning like uh quartet, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes to like Tim Rogers and the fellas. Oh, when it comes to the the 
All the bro- the William brothers. See, we just the Jackson <laughs> Southerners. You gonna, you gonna yeah. throw them on there? It, and Bill does that on purpose because, oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, God, you, like you could never, st- <laughs> no one ever sticks to four, especially when we do a gospel on um, Mount Rushmore. Yes, I mean, I, I thought you had it for a little bit, Miss Man, uh, Mrs. Man, but I'm like, okay, she actually yeah. did it. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm here. Like, yeah. But that's because y'all kept going without me. No, we, let's keep, keep, keep it. I mean, it's because I, I just remember growing up in, in the household, I'm hearing the O'Neill twins, Keith Brown. Well, you, you don't know nothing about the O'Neill twins. This is what my father played. Look, that was a free, that's what I say. Gospel music was free for us. We used to go watch them yeah. when they were coming to town. Yeah. So it's okay. like, you Mr. Know, Clean, Richard Clean White. A, a, a Timothy Wright. Mm-hmm. I'm just seeing Ooh, all Timothy of Wright. Riches. Yeah, mm. Mr. White. Ooh, man, yeah, Matt Clean White. Yes, Mr. Clean. Yes, so it's a lot. It's a lot of people have really played a part. Now you're gonna make me go listen to a lot of this. Of our Go ahead. Share, you know, share your playlist. Share your yeah. playlist. <laughs> I'm really grateful for it. You know, even yeah. with the the praise and worship that's happening, the shift now. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I still think we need the downright gospel whole, you know. Yeah. Put stomping. I just feel like we need it all. Oh, you got Chandler yeah. Moore. Yes. Yeah, so that, it's like Maverick City. So it's just it's so yeah, like Naomi, Naomi, Naomi Rain. Rain. Oh. It's just mm-hmm. like the list goes on and on because I feel like for the shifting of the time, it's like Lord, whatever the shift is, help me to shift with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's my thing is I want to be able to shift with it. I ask mm-hmm. God for longevity in mm-hmm. this business because I really do realize that praise is my weapon that praise mm-hmm. is my way out and it's my release and mm-hmm. and that's my thing of passing on that we never forget what our foundation is which is jesus and we all gonna need him and we need him now more than ever yep mm-hmm. that's beautiful beautiful you just deep mm. <laughs> yeah pray my shit. pray my we got, we got my word for the day yeah <laughs> oh, hey, so, uh, hey, uh, hey, folks, um, hey, uh, a lot of stuff going on with you guys. How can fans uh, keep up with you guys? I mean, and make sure to plug that YouTube channel as well. I looked at the content over there, some lovely content. What's mm-hmm. a way that fans could actually keep up with what's next for the uh, Mr. Go to Man TV for our, our YouTube. We're moving a lot of stuff. and We're going to start building a lot of content over to YouTube now that other people are tripping. Uh, <laughs> we put a lot of our content there to YouTube. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at David and Tamala, on Facebook at David and Tamala. Uh, your TikTok. TikTok is the real Tamala man. And mm-hmm. I am David Man on TikTok. That's not mine. So we we just moving around, but we just, you know, we just want to be able to help everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, so you definitely... You definitely graced our pay, our, our channel. And you definitely helped us. So um, you brought a smile on our faces today. Mm-hmm. Gave us some good words. Um, Man. Thank you. You, you did it all it. today. Yeah. Thank you. We so grateful. And I mean, even, can I just do so? I opened up, I got my award from the American Music Award to, to the, I and I opened it up today. And I was crying because again, I was so grateful and thankful for even I just say for the American people that voted for me, I just, it was such an honor. What about the Mexican people that voted? I said, what it could be Mexican in America? What about the African people? They in America? I said America. What about the European people? Oh my God. See y'all what I got here? <laughs> See, I, I, I felt what you were saying. Then, you know, in, in the 10 number ones that, that people have helped me gain, I mean, with being a, a gospel artist, I just, man, I tell you. It's, An independent it, gospel artist. Yes. Independent right. makes it even better, mm-hmm. even better. Makes thank even y'all, better. thank y'all for what y'all do. Y'all be encouraged. I know this is our first time meeting y'all. Hopefully, we get yeah. to meet y'all one on one. It won't be the last. Yeah, and y'all be blessed and just go for it. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. All by faith. I mean, you may can't see it, just believe it's coming. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. There we go. There have been times I I I, I look and I, and it. I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> Well, we, just remember us. If like it we, happened for us, it could happen for you. anybody. And God did it that's for us. He, that's he the did model. it for me. He that's, did that's, it. The, that's the model. Hey, uh, Bill, this one is one for the record books. I, I thoroughly <clears> enjoyed <throat> this interview. What's the uh, way that fans could actually give their suggestions on who we should interview next? 
um, go to our comment section and we call that my two cents and leave your two cents on who we should be able, who should we reach out to next? But if you have questions for the beautiful Mrs. Mr. Mrs. 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 Excuse me, I'm Tablet, choked huh? up here. Choked up, but Mrs. Man and the funny, ever funny, Mr. Consistent, Mr. Consistently Changing, <laughs> Mr. David Man. You guys you know leave what? us a question and we'll get it to him or hope. Can I you know, tell y'all something? Can I say something for y'all? Never ahead. be afraid to ask. Hey, just go ask. Yeah. It, oh, may, yeah. it may feel like uh, it, it's not coming, but just go ask. And the worst they could say is no. Like, trust me, we, we shoot That's our it. shots. The oh, best yeah. thing they could say is, hey, we're here. <laughs> yeah. And I see that pop, that screen pop up and I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, we, that, that, that yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bill, we just we just survived 12 rounds with some heavyweights, some um, undisputed champs. Undisputed. Uh, how, how you guys feel? We're I great. feel good. Feel great. But I'm going to tell you this, with Jesus, we always win. There we go. There we okay. go. We always yes, win with Jesus. Hey. We always win. I, I, look, I hate to do it to you, but we always win 12 round, baby. That's it. We got yeah. it. Yeah. Him, that was light work. Light work. Yeah. Like work. It's, 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 <laughs> uh, that was easy. Yeah. All right. Um, hey, we uh we enjoyed this. Um, definitely Thank enjoyed you. having you guys step into the ring. I uh, can't wait to have you guys back. Hey, everybody say peace. 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 It was our privilege.